Welcome to lecture 13 for chemistry 312. This lecture is on the chemistry of Neptunium. The Neptunium chapter from the chemistry of the actinides is the reading for this lecture on Neptunium chemistry. This lecture is going to cover nuclear properties and isotope production of Neptunium focusing on Neptunium-237, since it's the longest lived isotope and available in the largest quantities in which chemistry can be performed. We're going to talk about the aqueous phases of Neptunium. Multiple oxidation states are present, but we'll see that the plus five oxidation state dominates. This plus five oxidation state is similar to the uranyl in, in, in as much as you have a linear uh, anion, a cation with the two oxygens like the uranyl, this one will be the neptunyl. We're going to talk about the separation and purification of neptunium. And we're going to see that the oxidation state plays a role in the separation and purification. And when we talk about um, other separations that are done as part of the nuclear fuel cycle, for instance, the purex process, the fact that the oxidation state of neptunium can change and that changes the separation has influences on these other uh, radiochemical separations. We'll discuss the metallic state of neptunium and we'll talk about the different phases. We'll see that it's becoming more complex in terms of phases. We'll talk about neptunium compounds, number of neptunium compounds that have been prepared, synthesized, characterized. We'll go into structure and coordination chemistry, the role of um, coordination chemistry in terms of oxidation state is, a, is an ability to explore some of the F electron properties. And then we'll end this lecture discussing the analytical chemistry of neptunium, how one can determine neptunium concentrations, what different methods can be used. Neptunium has 22 known isotopes. The longest lived is the neptunium-237 isotope, which can be produced two ways in the nuclear fuel cycle. One is consecutive capture on uranium-235. Uranium-235 captures a neutron as instead of fissioning, in a smaller percentage of the time, it'll capture the uranium-236. The uranium-236 is also long-lived, and it can capture a neutron and create uh, uranium-237, which then beta decays to neptunium-237. There's also this N-to-N reaction on uranium-238, creating the uranium-237, which then beta decays to neptunium-237. And then lastly, in the nuclear fuel cycle, you can have uh, formation of americium-241 from the beta decay of plutonium-241. The alpha decay of americium-241 creates neptunium-237. Neptunium-237, one of the main uses of it is uh, for the formation of plutonium-238. Plutonium-238 is a very good heat source for producing uh, batteries that can be used for remote applications such as space exploration. Neptunium-238 and Neptunium-239 are also available. Neptunium-239, is, as we've already discussed, is a relatively short-lived half-life, but it does have a nice gamma line that can be used for radio tracers. And then Neptunium-235 and 236 can be produced from cyclotron irradiations of uranium-235. Neptunium has a range of oxidation states that are available in solution from the plus three to the plus seven. The most stable oxidation state, as we'll see, will be the plus five. However, other states can be stabilized based upon acidity, ligands available, and even the neptunium concentration. Similar to uranium, plus five and plus six oxidation states form dioxocations, as shown here. The redox potentials for neptunium have been evaluated, and the data is presented here. In basic solutions, there's some difficulty in evaluating the data due to the complex chemical speciation that occurs. Zane's data, which is shown here, where you have the absorption edge of different neptunium species as a function of oxidation state, present. And we see the neptunium-3 absorbs early, the 4 here, the 5 and the 6. They have a behavior that's indicative of this eel oxygen. And this information can be used to determine the ratio 
of different oxidation states in the solutions examines, and by using the Nernst equation, the redox potentials can be determined. In solution, neptunium can undergo disproportionation. For example, neptunium-5 can form neptunium-4 and neptunium-6 in solution. The equation here shows, what, shows the reaction that occurs where neptunium-5 with acid can go to neptunium-4 and neptunium-6. So this disproportionation is favored in high acidity and high neptunium concentrations. So if you wanted to limit disproportionation in a solution, you would limit both the neptunium concentration of the pentavalent oxidation state and the acidity. So there's an importance of understanding the oxidation state in neptunium since it dictates the chemistry. Here's presented some routes for preparing uh, oxids, specific oxidation states of neptunium. So the 6, the 4, the 5, and the 3. The fundamental approach is to take a mixture of oxidation states and either oxidize the, uh, the system completely to one oxidation state or reduce to a lower oxidation state. So for example, if one wanted to take a mixture and make it into neptunium-5, you could oxidize everything to neptunium-6, then take neptunium-6 and reduce that to neptunium-5. <clears throat> this information is important, particularly in separations, where neptunium may not, uh, in separation systems, they may not want neptunium to extract. So neptunium-5 will not extract in a pure X environment with tributylphosphate. However, if neptunium oxidizes to the 6 or reduces to the 4, it can extract. So work has been uh, performed evaluating redox control of neptunium in pure X systems. So hydroxylamine nitrate and its derivatives were used for neptunium, four, for neptunium 6 reduction to the 5. And this is found to be a first order uh, rate with excess reductant. This complex solution chemistry of neptunium can be uh, explored for the range of the oxidation states. Detailed modeling has been explored with neptunium-5 looking at the spin orbit coupling of the two 5F electrons. Obviously, since the neptunium species are colored, UV visible spectroscopy can be a useful tool in evaluating its speciation. And an exam, in, as an example here, in two molar perchloric acid, neptunium-3 has an absorbance of around 780 nanometers with an excision coefficient of 45. Tetravalent neptunium, a little bit higher at 960 with a larger extinction coefficient. The prominent oxidation state in solution, neptunium-5, has a very large molar absorptivity, close to 400, and is in the near IR region, close to 1,000. And neptunium-6 is over 1,000, 1,200 nanometers, with a molar extinction coefficient of 45. Neptunium-7 is available only in basic media, and the absorbance has been examined including vibrational states, since you have these neptunium oxygen bonds. A range of complexation constants have been evaluated for neptunium with a number of inorganic ligands, and the trends are similar to other metal ions. So observed here, fluorine being strongest, perchlorate being the weakest. And as we discussed with uranium, neptunium can also form cation-cation interactions, where the oxygen from neptunium can coordinate with metals listed here, going in strength from iron down to aluminum. The neptunium solution chemistry can also be explored through hydrolysis. The hydrolysis is, uh, preference is the same as for uranium, where the tetravalent is the greatest pr propensity to hydrolyze, the pentavalent the least. The data for the hydrolysis is listed here, and what's shown here is a speciation curve of neptunium-3, 4, 5, and 6 as a function of pH. And this data was collected with chess 
and this these complexation constants are available in the chess database. We've already discussed the importance of neptunium redox speciation in the purex separation. Again, neptunium-5 is not extracted. However, we've also discussed that neptunium-5 can slowly disproportionate in high acid, one of the conditions of the purex process, where it can form extractable neptunium-4 and neptunium-6 species. Studies have been performed to understand this redox behavior. And reduction of neptunium-6 by a range of compounds have been explored. One of these compounds is um, acetohydroxamic acid, which is shown here. And acetohydramic acid is uh, preferentially shown to complex with tetravalent species, including tetravalent neptunium and plutonium. And this has been used to help control its behavior in proposed separation systems. The back extraction of neptunium-5 can be used also to control plutonium and uranium um, during the separation process, particularly through controlled neptunium-6 reduction in the presence of plutonium-3. Again, plutonium-3 is an extracted species from the organic phase and is one, at one of the main goals of the Purex process for the separation of plutonium from uranium. We've already discussed the solvent extraction based methods using tributyl phosphate, where very similar to the uranium, we get the uh, neptunium 6 2 nitrate tributyl phosphate, and we'll, as we'll see with plutonium, the neptunium 4 with 4 nitrate tributyl phosphate system extracted. Data is shown here for the extraction of tetravalent neptunium and hexavalent. Neptunium. CMPO, which is a ligand that is uh, preferentially used in uh, the TRUEX process, has also been studied with tributyl phosphate, and separations have been achieved with oxidation, uh, oxidation state variation, where uh, neptunium and plutonium can be reduced, and neptunium-4 can be extracted into or organic and then remove with the carbonate oxalate, or EDTA. Other neptunium solvent extractions include the use of HDEHP, which is the molecule shown here. This is also part of uh, processing for uh, actinides. In this case, with one molar nitric acid with the addition, the addition of sodium nitrite, the uranium, plutonium, neptunium, and americium go into the most stable oxidation states. In this case, neptunium-5 is not extracted. So we get oxidized material. We can extract. And then if neptunium is reduced back to the 5, it can be back extracted into one molar nitric acid. Trianoctolamine is also used. And this uh, has been exploited for separation of neptunium from environmental samples where you can extract the neptunium in 10 molar HCl, and then back extract it with weaker HCl and a little bit of HF. Combinations of ligands, uh, synergistic extractions with CMPO and tributyl phosphate in dodecane have also been performed. And as we can see here, we can vary the distribution coefficients so to, depending upon the oxidation states. And if we examine a system such as one molar nitric acid. This mixture of CMPO and tributyl phosphate has a very high extraction for neptunium-6, extremely low for neptunium-5, and above one for neptunium-4. So here is a clear example of how the role of the neptunium oxidation state <clears throat> will vary the extraction behavior as a function of acid concentration. Now we can start exploring chemical forms of neptunium that have some relevance to the nuclear fuel cycle. One would be nep uh, metallic neptunium. This was first synthesized from neptunium trifluoride with barium metal at elevated temperature. Current methods are very similar to the uranium methods where you can use uh, group one or group two elements or a molten salt process for producing neptunium 
metal. So here's something where neptunium dioxide is dissolved in a molten salt. Through electrolysis, one can reduce the neptunium 4 all the way to the metallic state. Work has also been performed in the laboratory on using mercury, making amalgams of neptunium. This also works with uranium and plutonium from an acetic acid solution. And then the mercury can be distilled to produce pure metal. Neptunium has a melting point of around 600 degrees C, extremely low melting point, has a very high density, close to 20. There's three metallic forms. The transition temperatures are listed here for the alpha to the beta, around 500 K, and the beta to the gamma, around 850 K. The symmetries of the groups have been identified, orthorhombic, tetragonal, bodied centered cubic. And we see this trend again with, um, compared to uranium, where we went from uh, symmetries and at higher temperatures ended with something similar to body centered cubic. The oxides of neptunium are important compounds for the nuclear fuel cycle. However, unlike uranium, there are only two known oxide species. Remember with uranium we had primarily UO2, U3O8, UO3. For neptunium, we have MP2O5 and the dioxide, MPO2. NPO2 is the stable oxide, and it can be formed from the thermal de decomposition of a range of neptunium compounds, and it has the same sort of structure as the other actinides. So we would expect neptunium dioxide and uranium dioxide to form solid solutions. This compound is stable over a range of temperatures, and the phase diagram, where we look at the, the ox the, uh, phases as a function of temperature against the oxygen and neptunium ratio is shown here. And comparing this to the uranium phase diagram, we see much fewer, many, many fewer species. Now, NP2O5 can be formed from the thermal decomposition of neptunium-6 or neptunium-5 hydroxide. However, this material, if you make the NP2O5, it decomposes to the NPO2 between 700 and close to 1000 K. The halides are also important species. You can make neptunium halides the 3, 4, 5, and 6 oxidation state. And these can be prepared from the reactions with HF as shown here, either starting with the dioxide or taking the fluoride, the tetrafluoride, adding another fluoride to it, taking the dioxide and reacting it with the fluoride directly to make the tetrafluoride. Like uranium hexafluoride, neptunium hexafluoride is volatile, and it actually has a higher vapor pressure than both the uranium and the plutonium compound. The synthesis is similar to what we discussed for the uranium hexafluoride compound. Neptunium tetrachloride can be formed from the dioxide with carbon tetrachloride, and then the trichloride can be formed by treating the tetrachloride with hydrogen. This is similar to the uranium reaction. The bromide can be formed by reacting the dioxide with aluminum tribromide. And if you take the elements, neptunium and iodide, um, they can also form neptunium iodide. Same thing with ne bromide, neptunium, and bromide. These reactions are all similar to the uranium species. However, the measured data on the neptunium compounds is much more limited than the uranium homologs. An area of fundamental chemistry that involves neptunium is coordination chemistry. And this interest is driven by the different oxidation states that neptunium has and the ability to perform systematic studies of the actinides. For neptunium-3 coordination compounds, there's very little data uh, due to the instability in aqueous solutions under air. Neptunium-4, there's been a few compounds formed and they find to be isostructural with the uranium-4 complex. Neptunium-5 is shown to undergo cation cation interactions. 
Neptunium-6, there's been some simple, simple synthesis, for instance, with oxalic acid and Neptunium-6 solutions. However, over time, these compounds will show reduction of Neptunium from the hexavalent oxidation state. And then for Neptunium-7, there's some literature available, but there tends to be disagreement over the exact Neptunium-7 species that are in these coordination compounds. An example of Neptunium organometallic chemistry is shown here. And it's mainly done with the cyclopentadienyl species demonstrated here, which has actually been performed for the other actinides. The um, synthesis route is shown here, where you can take Neptunium CP chloride with some sodium, drive a reduction to get the Neptunium 3 tri CP in tetrahydrofuran. It's been found difficulty to remove the tetrahydrofuran from this compound, so there's strong coordination still in that environment. In Neptunium 4, a similar uh, synthesis, again with a chloride starting compound, where we can get the uh, four CP ligands around the Neptunium. This dissolves in benzene and tetrahydrofuran and allows spectroscopic examination of this material to be performed. Finally, there's some analytical methods that can be used for determining Neptunium. Most common you would expect would be radiometric methods. For the alpha, there's uh, 2 times 10 to the 7th Becquerel per gram. So this allows a way to detect the Neptunium. Isolation of Neptunium from seawater can be performed. Usually the material is, tried, is concentrated with coprecipitation ion exchange or in solvent extraction. Liquid scintillation has also been used, obviously, as an extension of alpha spectroscopy. Another interesting route is the formation of Neptunium-238 by the neutron capture on Neptunium-237, so neutron activation analysis. And this has the, uh, the capture cross-section is high, 170 barns, and the half-life of the Neptunium is very short, 2.117 days. So this allows for a very sensitive route for the determination of Neptunium, and it's found to be 500 times more sensitive than alpha spectroscopy. Spectrophotometric routes are available, as we've already discussed. Based upon the molar absorptivities, these concentrations can be observed in uh, UV visible spectroscopy in a one centimeter cell with an absorbance down to 0 0.02. So Neptunium-5, you can almost get down to micromole per liter. Fluorescence has also been explored. These are usually performed at low temperature data has been collected that shows that neptunium can fluoresce and of course x-ray fluorescence and mass spectroscopy are useful tools in neptunium analytical methods a review of an analytical, of an analytical method we discussed during gamma spectroscopy is most power spectroscopy so the ex the excitation is done with americium 241 and this is just a review of what we've already discussed. It shows that one can identify different species of Neptunium through its most power spectrum. So as a review, this presentation discussed the role of oxidation states of Neptunium in solution, how those oxidation states can be adjusted, and how it influences the chemistry, particularly its separation chemistry, the main fact being that Neptunium-5 is the dominant oxidation state in solution. However, the oxidation state can change over time and conditions, it, particularly with disproportionation of Neptunium-5 going to Neptunium-6 and 4, where both these, uh, so both these oxidation states can be extracted. Some of the questions you should be able to answer based on this lecture are listed here. What's the primary solution phase oxidation state of Neptunium? Neptunium is pentavalent, plus 5. But that compound is the dioxide neptunyl, as shown here. What is the neptunyl disproportionation reactant of the Neptunium-5? Well, Neptunium-5 with acid goes to Neptunium-4 plus Neptunium-6. We have two Neptuniums going to a 5 going to a 4 and the 6. 
so there's no net change in overall oxidation state. This is also a condition that one can evaluate to determine how to keep Neptunium-5 stable in solution. One would be not store it under acidic conditions and try to keep the concentration low. How does this Neptunium disproportionation reaction impact the Purex process? We introduced the Purex process in this lecture. We'll have some details on this process in Lecture 17 but the process is used to remove uranium and neptunium from spent fuel. Uh, if neptunium, is, uh, during the separation process, neptunium is not an uh, extracted product. Neptunium-5 does not extract in the Purex process, however the process is acidic, so you can get disproportionation of neptunium to the 4 and to the 6 oxidation state, and both these extract. So in this high acidity process, neptunium Five does not extract neptunium four and six, so that is in plutonium four and uranium six. They extract in the PRX process. So if neptunium undergoes disproportionation, it can actually go in both the aqueous and the organic phase of the process. And then finally, another example of a question is what are the neptunium binary oxides? Unlike uranium, where we saw many uranium oxide species, for neptunium we only see two, this neptunium five, NP2O5, and this Neptunium 4 NPO2 compound. When you have completed the lecture, please comment on the blog and respond to the lecture quiz. The outcomes for this lecture are listed here. They start with which Neptunium isotopes are used in chemistry. Neptunium-237 is the longest lived isotope, so it is used in the bulk of the Neptunium studies, particularly those with materials or compound synthesis. And Neptunium-239 has a gamma that is easy to trace. You should understand Neptunium chemical trends and identify the solution oxidation states of Neptunium. When we say identify the solution oxidation states, this means through UV visible spectroscopy when we talk about the trends, and understand how the different oxidation states have different chemical reactions and different chemical trends. You should understand how neptunium metal is prepared, and you should understand the properties of neptunium metal. You should be able to discuss and understand neptunium separation methods. There's a few separation methods that are discussed in this lecture. There will be more in the lecture on separations. You should understand and describe the different neptunium compounds that were discussed in this lecture everything from simple binary inorganic compounds to organometallic complexes. And you should understand analytical methods for Neptunium, including Mossbauer spectroscopy. And again, the Mossbauer links with the gamma lecture.